There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon Catch me howling at the moon Thank you so much for tuning in to Scott Week's podcast episode this week. I'm so very excited for you because this is our first in-person episode, and I'm here with my dear friend, Jeff Garner. Hey, guys. Hi. So if you don't <laughs> already know Jeff Garner, he's on our board for Scott Week, but he's an Emmy-winning documentarian, and he's also a sustainable fashion designer. So, Jeff. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so. Don't know if I can handle this. All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't. So far, so good. Don't worry. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> All right. So, Jeff, your company is called Prophetic. Yes. So, tell me about your journey um, from when you want, realized that you wanted to do not only be a fashion designer, but sustainable. And what does that mean exactly? Good question. Everyone asks. So, sustainable means basically use natural fibers, natural dyes. So, mm -hmm. natural dyes, i.e. meaning plant-based. Not vegetable-based, but plant-based. So that's what stays vegetables tend to kind of fade out and you know that's what you craft with mm -hmm. so we want to have lasting power like the indigo in my shirt you want to be able to wash it over and over and over and this is made of hemp so the idea is that hemp is the strongest fiber therefore it lasts forever ideally so i ride horses in it you know have hemp boxers that should last like 10 20 years you know that that's the idea of sustainable fashion so and yeah, I've been always, you know, I started 18 years ago, always been doing sustainability because I grew up on a horse farm in Tennessee and it was just kind of natural. I was taught like, hey, you shouldn't do anything that's going to harm your environment, mm -hmm. you know, because I grew up playing in the woods and it's like, wow, I don't want that creek to be polluted. I don't want to smell this like when your mom does laundry and you smell that, like, what is that? And it's just, you know, that perfume stuff. So that got me on that path just naturally. I was like, okay, let me start designing and then I was like a little kid locked in my room and I started designing and my sister would come knocking and be like leave me alone you know <laughs> and I used to play dress up with her and it just kind of progressed and I started designing for musicians in Nashville that was kind of like what spurred it but when I got into it it was really like dirty like the mm -hmm. dyes and I did printing for the bands and all that plastic salt ink and then you just mm -hmm. saw the workers and their health and it was just like wow. I started asking questions like there's got to be a different way and that's what propelled it. So it was a natural progression. It wasn't like, ooh, eco fashion. That sounds kind of trendy right now. Let me get into that. So yeah. it honestly is a lifestyle for me. So, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you can see that. I mean, we're, we are at Jeff's house right on the beach in Malibu. It's absolutely stunning. You're surrounded by nature. Chickens right there. <laughs> yes. You get your own fresh eggs from those chickens, is it right? Yeah. I had five today. So. A little dirty, but you don't wash them because they have a protective coating, right? You know this? Mm. So that's store-bought eggs you put in the fridge because you got to keep them. But get them from the chicken, they can lay out on your cabinet for a week or so. Yeah. Amazing. I didn't know that. I don't know. Little, little facts, you know, <laughs> for you city people. Not kidding. Well, I'm vegan, so I don't pay attention to the eggs. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you went to Pepperdine. I did. That's right. Um, and... I know, you, so you were talking about designing in Nashville and it was kind of dirty. And I remember in your documentary, you had worked downtown Los Angeles in the garment district. Is that right? Well, that's where I was doing the bit printing for the bands. Uh -huh. So that kind of started my path. And I interned for another designer that was kind of base shop was in there. And so he taught me some things. He met with cut and sew people. And that was kind of my first introduction. I was like, yeah, it's, it's dirty. I don't like this. So then I started like meeting with the textilers and say, hey, can we do different fabrics? I want to use this fabric. And like, well, we don't do that. And I'm like, well, why? And then I said, I've 
uh, and at this time I had the buying power of the bands, mm -hmm. so Christian country bands. So I could be like, hmm, what if I give you an order for like 3,000 yards? Would you do the fabric then? They're like, oh yeah, yeah. So then I was able to get them to make some hemp, make some organic cotton mm -hmm. and do different fabrics or higher price points and kind of start that whole process. And at the time they were like, we don't do that and this is why. And I was like, okay, I get it, but this is the future. And I was like, I promise you, if I don't buy it all, I'll help sell it. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of my thing. So that, you know, it's a commitment for textilers to change and do something different and sit on the shelf. It's money. So naturally they want to do what everyone's buying. And obviously they're buying cheap stuff. They're buying nylon, polyester, and all that stuff. So hemp mm -hmm. is actually the natural fabric of polyester. So polyester is the, what they create in the lab to mimic the properties. So that's why it's strong, but it's obviously not permeable. So it doesn't allow sweat or perspiration through. Mm -hmm. That's why it smells after you get through working out. Mm. It's petroleum based. It's got, you know, um, other, I don't want to get into all the chemicals, but it's got formaldehyde in it, right? Which is the same mm -hmm. power. It's just, anyways, it's not good for you, not healthy for you. What you put on your body goes into your skin, absorb. Those mm -hmm. toxins go in your bloodstream, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, okay, we got to change this. So. Absolutely. And I think, um, one of the first times that we sat down together, I was in shock about, you are telling me about swimsuits and underwear and mm. why it's so important, not necessarily for the other clothes we wear externally, but particularly for clothes that are connected to sensitive areas of our skin. Sure. So can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so again, it's called, you know, it's, anyways, biomimicry. So it's a study of nature to figure out solutions, right? So again, during the World War II, we ran out of parachutes so they needed a replacement of silk. So they basically created nylon. I think it was DuPont. They created it in a laboratory mm -hmm. um, because they needed it, right? So then what happened was we took that nylon and then instead of the silk stockings, the ladies started wearing nylon stockings. Mm. But nobody studied the synergy effect. What does that nylon do on a woman's body when it's on her legs, when it's her panties? Nobody studied that. Why would they? They just said, hey, this is a cheap you know, fabric. We can make it in bulk and it's readily available. We don't have to wait on the silkworms to hatch and da 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 da. So that's what happened. So, but nobody was questioning it and we just started wearing it and it was more readily available. We could buy more polyester suits to work in. Everything became cheaper and we were happy. So now we're living in 2020 and we're seeing the ramifications of it. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing young teenagers with, you know, TDI and you know, it's basically their, their skin's breaking out and they shouldn't, they're getting breast cancer at a younger age. And we're seeing all these kind of after effects and we're not, it's hard to place a correlation because, you know, there's a diet involved, there's environmental pollution, but our skin is the most permeable part of our body. So therefore, yes, it will take in anything we put on it. So they call it bioaccumulation. So you want to lessen the amount of amount of toxins you put in and on your body. Mm -hmm. That's bioaccumulation, like a cup running over. So once it runs over, something's going to happen. Your body's going to react. It's not in a good way, right? So you'll get some type of disease. Yeah, I'm not saying it's cancer all the time, but you'll get something and retribute. So the idea is you don't put that stuff in your body. You don't eat non-organic food or GMO food. Like mm -hmm. it's just. But we know about that because it's been widely accepted now because all the documentaries and all the talk shows and blah blah mm -hmm. blah but nobody's talking about what you put on your body mm -hmm. so that's what I'm passionate about and trying to get more and more people aware and then now I got people after me like oh that's not scientific da, da, da. and I'm like I come from a science background my, my grandfather was a main scientist in the Manhattan Project in Tennessee so I'm like haha I got you I'm not just a <laughs> designer I'm actually a scientist so I'm actually getting more and more studies I'm actually got one just funded with a grant so I'm going to go do 2020 study because now they're saying all these old findings are too old it's just funny how they find little loopholes and say that's not scientific you know mm -hmm. uh, you need to prove that okay well there's been 16 studies that have been published it says there's correlations and blah 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 so mm -hmm. that's what we're up against because think about it all these chemical companies um I'm not going to name who, and all these fashion companies, I'm not going to name who, make billions and billions of dollars off of this old model, this system of chemical toxic fabrications and dyes. Therefore, why would they change it? You know, the profit margins would be less. Mm -hmm. They'd have to start charging real pricing, right? You can still buy a t-shirt that's seven bucks, same price you could buy it in the 70s. There's an issue with that. 
Mm-hmm. So everything else has gone up, gas, food, housing, but why not clothing? It's because we're still making it super cheap of cheap fabrications and in bad places, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about that. They're like, okay, where's the clothes made? Where are they manufactured? We're talking about fair labor, but we're still not talking about the main issue, which is like, what is that made of? Why the heck would I put that on my body? Absolutely. And it's hard too because I remember after our first conversation, it was right before, which I want to get to it. So Jeff has launched, has launched his Intimates collection called Wolf and Rose. We will get Kelsey to that. Kelsey was a model. I was a model. I'm not a model, but I was a model for that. We'll show you a picture. <laughs> um, get but all I those remember, Scottish lads after you. Um, oh my goodness. I am single. I was kidding. <laughs> wow. Plug, plug. Plug, plug. <laughs> not looking, but anyway. Um, Yes. So after my first conversation with you, I literally went home and threw out all of my swimsuits. Brilliant. And I remember texting you trying to find a swimsuit that was hemp organic and sustainable and all that stuff. And it was so confusing for me because looking on Instagram, there's all these hashtags like, oh, sustainability. And hmm. these are recycled nylon. And they had different weird made up names for materials and toxins. I remember texting you like, Jeff, what is this? Why are they using sustainable when, yes, it's recycled nylon but it's still nylon and it's right. so toxic for you so what it, what tell me how yeah, what I'll, is that i'll explain that and then as most layman like as i can because it's a bigger concept but basically they're talking about this circular economy right mm. so it's like everything else instead of fixing the problem let's just let's talk about this and this will not fix it but it sounds like it fixes it and it sounds cool and it's going to buy us some time. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's don't go to electric cars, let's go to the hybrid car. It's in between, right? It's still gas, still keeps us petroleum based. Yeah. So it's the same idea. So circular economy basically says, what we, so we make things out of plastic, petroleum based, polyester, mm-hmm. right? It's plastic. So we make fabric out of that, and then we can ideally melt it down, re-spin those fibers, and make new plastic, new polyester. Not good. No. Right, the processing of melting it down, the process is re-spinning it, all those chemicals go back in, reused again, plus it goes back on your body. Right, that's not a good thing. But people aren't seeing that, they're seeing, you know, I did a, a project with Patagonia years and years ago, it's called PET, so it's, the, it's a recycled poly. Mm-hmm. At that time, it was it sounded like a cool concept. I did some board shorts, and I was like, okay, this is cool. But then I realized it's not the best solution. Mm-hmm. It is a solution. But the problem is we should get off of plastic completely Mm -hmm. and not give it another kind of channel, another kind of, oh, this is great. And then you feed that monster too. Then we're starting to make more polyester. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to replace like the nylon swimsuits, you replace it with silk. Silk naturally is water repellent and is beautiful, but it won't last as long. I make my silk board shorts. I surf in them every day. (laughs) Sorry, got real bugs here. This is in a set. Nature. Um, But I surf in them every day usually two or three times a day. It's mm-hmm. my lifestyle. And then probably after six, seven months, I start getting holes in them. Mm-hmm. And that's naturally. And then if I put them in the ground with water and heat, they would buy it a grade, naturally. The only things that would remain would be the metal snaps. And then I could take those and make new board shorts. And that's a concept. So I should only have technically one board short. I should wear it until I get holes. Then I should put it in the ground, take those snaps, and make new ones. That's the idea. But obviously, we want 10 swimsuits just in case. You know, we're going to holiday. I'm wearing blue today and yellow <laughs> tomorrow. And I'm wearing my one piece because I burn my belly. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, stuff like that. So obviously, we're addicted to this fashion. We're addicted to cheap price points. So how do you really teach people? Well, maybe you just buy one silk swimsuit. And that's what you wear every day, you know, when you're on the beach in the sun. Because we're talking again about synergy of, of effect. So most people don't realize, okay, yeah, okay, nylon, yeah, it's got chemicals in it. But when the sun hits that, there's your synergy, Mm -hmm. right? It off-gasses carbon monoxide. I mean, there's other things that go straight in your skin. When things heat up, that's when the pores open and things release. Mm. So we're sitting out in the sun on these beaches, and it's on your breast, and, you know, it's on other parts. And so, therefore, that's, you know, not a good place for it to be soaking in. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, huge fan of what you're doing for, because of that. But so I'm really excited. So tell us about your, so you have prophetic, which is basically you design for men and women and you have, oh my gosh, this is what hooked me on Jeff first before I even met Jeff was. It wasn't my main. 
well, among <laughs> other things, but these gorgeous ball gowns and just absolutely stunning pieces. And I, we, I could talk to you for hours about those alone. Thank you. But um, so you have Prophetic, but then you sure. just launched your Intimates collection called Wolf and Rose. Yes. So tell us about that journey. Okay, so basically Prophetic, it's been 18 years, like I said. So I've, now I'm doing couture ball gowns. That's to tell mm. the story. That's to say, hey, look, guys, you make stuff out of hemp that looks like this, and it gets the conversation started, right? But obviously, I mean, I wish you'd wear a ball gown every day, but people just don't anymore. I mean, it's, you know, it's, come mm. on, we're in a different society, but we still have balls and still have events. But so the daily wear is what's lacking. So I wanted to create something that people could touch and feel every day, and that's what's going to help shift the change and people were put you know a buddy Matt who I got you know here in Malibu to help me jump start this project I was like uh. I converted him right away because I was like your manlyhood might be affected by this and then I gave him the stats and he's like all right threw him away same thing went home threw him all away because you know mm -hmm. um, you know he doesn't want that to be affected and that's yeah. a, you know it's a real concern so, um, you know, impotence and just, um, you know, there's basically in the polyester, the friction. So there's a positive and negative. Not mm. to get into detail, but that's going to like where you can shock yourself when you touch. You know, as a kid, you scoot across the carpet. Yeah. Where does that come from? It's science. I mean, it's positive and negative. So if that's rubbing together down there, guess what it's doing? So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's reasons and there's reasons for prostate cancer going up as well. Mm hmm so obviously and this is my heart and so i was like and then I, my mom has, uh, has been fighting breast cancer and she passed away in november and obviously that uh, that really propelled me into okay now i gotta do something more because you know i gotta get this on my friends and my family mm -hmm. because i don't want to sit and just talk about it. hey guys you know this is what's going on and this is what we need to do and da -da, not have a solution so but I always thought if I presented a solution, people think I'm just trying to sell something. I was like, no, that's not it. You know, that's why I was just doing couture to kind of be the artist and show and, yeah. you know, do, do these U.S. Embassy shows internationally. And it was, it's been a great journey and a great exposure. But, you know, the reality is people really need to touch and feel. Mm -hmm. And then they get it and they'll never go back. They won't, you know. That's why I wanted to do a training ball for little girls. Be like, you know, I did one for my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, what? Dad does tra makes training bras for his daughter, <laughs> and I was like, "Look, you can wear it. We can do different colors, and all your friends can wear it." She's like, "No, I'm not gonna wear it, Dad." Oh. Like, yeah, it was cool. It was made of hemp and all that. But yeah. but if you start them at that place, then they'll recognize if they put something that's itchy or smells weird or whatever. They'll be like, "This is weird. I'm taking this off." Mm -hmm. But if you have to start them that way, but we've just been so conditioned to all this other fabric. Like I obviously I haven't been wearing it. In like 20 years so yeah. I you know I can't tell you I couldn't put it on you know I have to sleep sometimes on the floor at, ho at hotels mm -hmm. because the bleach and the sheets it just dries my skin out like and if you think about it you'd recognize what that is and what it looks like how it feels but mm -hmm. we're just so conditioned so we just put on more lotion and stuff we just don't think about it why do you have bumps on the back after you're doing I got some branch after you're doing <laughs> yoga you know you're yeah. like you're dressed in Lulu I should say but dress in like leggings and a top made of nylon and stretch well, mm -hmm. and you eat organically and you're young and beautiful and doing yoga every day and living on the beach in Tulum why are you getting little bumps on your back well that's the TDI and the stretch right mm -hmm. which is a hormone disruptor basically mm. so. that makes sense absolutely um, and so basically what you've done for your intimate question do you have what kind of items do you have for men and women then? oh yeah so we got the hemp boxers for the men uh-huh lovely um and i call it the three stringer <laughs> i spent about six months designing this mm -hmm. so literally the three stringer stands on its own just saying <laughs> so all the men should love these uh -huh. just saying um and then the waistband is made of organ organic cotton oh. natural rubber Wow. So, which I, I had a first version, like version number one, and it didn't weave it tight enough, so it loses its strength naturally over time. Mm -hmm. So then I did a tighter weave, and I'm obviously I tested. I've been wearing them for months, and anyway, so surfing in them even, and it doesn't lose strength now. So they should ideally last ten years, but as long as I've had them, it's for a year now. Yeah. So, but the idea is that you can still put them in the dryer, even though you know I don't like dryers, but mm -hmm. you can still put them in the dryer if you have to, and it won't affect it. Oh, that's great. And then, and the women, yeah, sorry, the women, we have the boxer briefs, and we, 
um, which are sexy. But they're they're like an everyday, right? Yeah. Um, and then we're doing a thong for like an everyday because sometimes ladies have to wear dresses, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually the idea is we're going to go into more categories. So I've been I worked on a, a bra years ago and asked Giselle to kind of fit it for me and give me feedback, and it's made of hemp. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to launch that soon. Um, and then you know just look at other problem solving areas. So we're going to do little boys, do a hemp boxer for them girls training bra and then kind of expand so that's awesome yeah that's yeah. the idea so fingers crossed yeah and i just want to go back to two for the boxes so i know um several of your male friends that are wearing your boxers they all say to me oh my gosh these are amazing i talked to charlie the other day and he was saying um you know i wear my boxers for three or four days in a row and i don't have to wash them and yes. they don't smell because no. they're antibacterial antibacterial antifungal mm -hmm. so what that really means is that hemp is porous in nature because mm -hmm. it is just a natural fabric nothing's blocking those pores mm. so it will open and not hold on to smells cotton is just holds on to smells i mean think mm. about it it's just it, the water and it's all the water usage when you grow the crop i mean it's just you know, so that's why hemp is, is better, for, especially for boxers. But yeah, it's like the yeah. ultimate travel boxer. That's so, awesome. Yeah, that's great. I do it all, yeah. I ride horses in them, I wear them, you know, all week long and London Fashion Week and it's fine. That's awesome. So the other thing that's going on right now is, so you have a Kickstarter going on right now for Wolf and Rose. Yeah, that yeah. was Matt's idea. Awesome, and Matt, <laughs> Matt. So Matt Schubin, he's the amazing marketing guru for his for the Prophetic and Wolf and Rose team. Um, so tell me about the Kickstarter campaign. What are you guys raising money for, and where is that going to go to? Sure. So it's basically go to expanding the collection. So obviously, like I said, I did the hemp boxer, and I already produced them because I wanted to get them out the door and get them going and get them on people. But I sampled out the rest, so all the women's and the young boys and the training bra. So we want to expand that because people don't realize how much goes into making just one item of mm. clothing. Like, you, you know, it's your pattern, your markers, you know, your grading, and then you, all your fabrications, your testing. So it's <clears throat> definitely not cheap. So you want to be able, but I want to do it right. And so we want to test it and all that stuff. So the idea of the Kickstarter is just to raise that funding. So we have to pull from other areas what I'm doing and then it allows us to expand it and expand it in a pure sense. So we do everything right. So we don't skimp anywhere. We're not... You know, we're making it here locally, we're using the right fabrications, we're doing the right, you know, stitching, we're using hemp, you know, for the thread, and then it's just like there's no, and so that way it just stays pure, and so it just goes direct to the consumer, and at a feasible price, I mean, it's a real price point, because, mm -hmm. you know, we just can't do the Calvin Klein price mark at like 15, 20 bucks, because we're not doing what, we're not making the same, using the same fabrics, we're not making it where they're making it, mm -hmm. it's just not feasible. No, I mean, there's longevity, in it. And, and this is whole thing about the fast fashion. My underwear, my old underwear that I was getting that wasn't proper underwear, it would only last me a year or two, and it would just fall apart, and it was just disgusting, mm -hmm. whereas your underwear, as you said, they can last up to 10 years, yeah. which is, that, absolutely, why would I not pay a little bit more for that quality? Well, that's it, and people need to get back to that thinking. They call it design obsolescence, so they actually mm. teach this in design school where they teach basically designers to make products that fall apart. And it sounds like sacrilegious, but that's what happens. So it drives consumers back in the store to buy more. So Disgusting. they don't want it to last forever because then you're not coming back in. And, but then, mm. then again, consumers are okay. They're like, okay, I'll have, wear this t-shirt for three months. And I'll sweat it and then it's dirty. I'm just going to use it as a rag and get another one. Well, that's because it's cheap. If that t-shirt was 50 bucks, no, they wouldn't do that. They had a whole value on it. They would respect it a little bit more. That's how it used to be when we made our own clothes, when we had tailors making our clothes. There's no way we passed those clothes down to our next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have clothing for my family, and you know, that's really neat. And that yeah. builds character, and that's just some, that's something we should think about. Absolutely, yeah. I, mean, I still have some of my grandmother's scarves and some of her clothes and that she wore in the 50s and 60s, and it's, yeah, it's also so really cool to wear. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, we're going to put the Kickstarter link in, down below in the text. So please go check out Jeff's Kickstarter for Wolf and Rose. Um, and it's not just donating money because I've already donated, or however you say, given money. And I get, for whatever the amount was, I got three pairs of underwear. So you can go and get your underwear that is sustainable, truly sustainable, with hemp and sustainable dyes, and it's made by Jeff. And we have some experience packages, which are fun, too. Like, oh, really? Yeah, so I have a farm in Tennessee, so we're like, we'll go to Tennessee, and we'll do, you'll see my design process there, and like, go to dinner, and we ride a horse, and stuff like that. We also have one in Malibu as well. 
oh Matt put gosh. them together. They're pimping me out a little bit, but you know, it's for a good cause. So. Wow. But it's cool. You know, I think there's something about when you meet the creators and you see the heart of it. Mm. And, you know, I think people respect that. You know, back in the day, we had like the Medici family that really supported the artists and, you know, Renaissance Florence. And we wouldn't have Da Vinci or Michelangelo, all these great pieces if there wasn't that you know, banking family that kind of supported these arts. And unfortunately, we don't have that today. Mm -hmm. But I think people are hungry for that real authentic experience. So mm -hmm. it's, kind of, it's kind of neat, too. You don't get that every day, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. And I also encourage you guys to go watch Jeff's, and we'll put a link in the text as well, but um, Jeff's documentary. And it's, it's such a fun and easy watch, and it goes by super fast, but it'll take you right into Jeff's background. You'll see snippets of his farm in Tennessee and how he got started, and you even go to China, and it was horrifying. I mean, I want to ask you what you felt like. There is the river in China where they just yeah. dumped all the dyes into the river. It's called the Pearl River, yeah. It's mm -hmm. where they do majority of the denim dyeing. But mm -hmm. other dyes as well. But simply, yeah, it was just because it's petroleum-based dyes, and with denim, you have starch in it mm -hmm. to get that hardness, right? So that sucks the oxygen out of the water. So everything dies in the water. So it just obviously smells pungent. And then you got, it looks like an oil slick because of the petroleum-based, mm -hmm. right? And then it's just, it's just not, you throw a match on it, the whole thing would go up. So it just shows you there's, you know, there's a lack of respect, you know, there because it, they just discard it. but. It, it's a bigger problem just saying, oh, they just dump their waste. It's because they don't have the money to do the recycling programs because certain companies, I'm not going to name them, they're based in the U.S., who do mass, mass quantities, beat them down the price point. These poor factories, they have to do it as cheap as possible. They don't have the money to do the recycling program for their dye vats, mm -hmm. and they're stuck. But the consumer, if they knew about it, would pay 10 cents more for this pair of jeans to have that recycling program. But this, you know, brand, this store that sells cheap stuff, they're all about cheap, 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 buy less. And that's their, that's their idea. You know, that's mm -hmm. what they're programming into people. So they're afraid if they bump up the price in a little bit, they won't sell as much. It's yeah. all a num it's just a numbers game. So Absolutely. it's unfortunate. But anyway, so yeah, so the doc is great. And then we're also doing London Fashion Week. Yes, yep. so you're going London Fashion Week. That your show is September 17th in London. Correct. Yeah, it's Mad Hatter inspired. It's called Down the Rabbit Hole. So I'm showing my couture collection, which is made of still some Scottish fabrics. Basically, all the fabrics I've worked with, uh, Balinese fabrics and Madrid lace and the Scottish textiles, and I put it all together like an infusion, and created Mad Hatter because it's kind of disheveled Victorian. That's what yeah. I call it. So it'd be cool. And then we're going to launch the Intimate Sair. Oh my gosh, amazing. Yeah. So it'd be kind of like eyes wide shut is shut. Eyes wide shut. Yeah. At the end, they come out in underwear and mask. Kitty. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. That'd be really, really cool. Um, and you mentioned Scottish textile. So for our Scott Week, Scottish enthusiasts, um, because we were supposed to do Scott Week in 2020, as you know, in April, and Jeff has graciously agreed to do his uh, Mary Queen of Scots collection at the show so we're hopefully going to postpone that to April 2021 but it'd be really cool now that you mentioned the Scottish textiles in the Mad Hatter it'd be really interesting kind of maybe do a mix of that but we can talk about that later yeah Yeah. I mean I got the Scottish collection in my house right there it's ready to go oh for your, your show I want to show it one last time because it was such Ooh. a beautiful collection it's absolutely yeah. and we're going to put a link to some of the Mary Queen of Scots collection but that really we, quick yeah. tell us about the Mary Queen of Scots collection yeah, so we did that, um, and, you know, obviously with the uh, Scottish um, Heritage Foundation. So basically, it's, no, sorry, Historic Environment Scotland. I always get it mixed up. <laughs> That's who we worked with. And they took me around all these old mills that still produce fabrications there, which mm -hmm. are amazing. All these old machineries from the early 1900s. And so I pulled from each place. I pulled lace. I pulled the, you know, your wool there. Mm -hmm. um, I pulled some linen. Um, and we, I just turned those into gowns and I made cuffs out of lace that they could sell in their stores like Edinburgh Castle and whatnot. And then we, we showed the collection at Edinburgh Castle. It's the first show ever. It was amazing and we had a great turnout. It was just gorgeous. Had a horse out front, a piper piping everyone in. It was really, really cool. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you could feel the spirit, the energy there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what a beautiful night. And, you know, so the collection was a a representation of what they would have back then but not exact you know not exact but mm -hmm. it was uh yeah you just had to watch it yeah it's amazing yeah absolutely and um just finishing up especially 
you have Scottish ancestry. Yeah. And I know you, you've traveled on Scotland Vic and you have some Scottish friends. Yeah. Um, so tell us about your love of Scotland and if you had to go to one place in Scotland, where would it be? Well, with this project, they took me all over. We went to Orkney and the Western Isles. I mean, we went Inverness. I mean, all at Glencoe, all the area, major areas, but to mm -hmm. some little hidden gems. And met with some artists in these areas and, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, wow, really living from the land. Mm -hmm. So that's beautiful about Scotland. I love the Western Isles. That's just gorgeous. And, mm -hmm. you know, just a, it's a slower pace of life. But, you know, and I just don't think they understand and appreciate how much beauty is there mm -hmm. but again you know it's hard because when you you're battling commerce right and how do you make means and how do you you know create get these fabrics and keep them going when you know you got the people knocking off what's sad as you go into Edinburgh and see them knocking off Scottish tartan and they're made in mills in China and obviously it's not made in Scotland and mm -hmm. the tourists don't understand or appreciate nor care and it's just sad to see that you know mm -hmm. um, because we do need to support local and especially local textilers and you know there's one place I found they're still doing the, the movie screens they used to make all the movie screens because yeah. they make that width and they're still there doing it <gasps> That's so, so, cool. so you know but they're barely holding on you know that was the thing so yeah. um, so I think that was the main reason for this project just kind of showcase you can do things you know um, differently and there's different applications and whatnot so yeah, yeah. That's so cool. But Scotland's, yeah. I mean, I, I love the highlands. I can get lost up, up there in the mountains somewhere on a horse and be okay. But mm -hmm. after I get done with all this and get everyone changed over to hemp boxers, that's where I'm going to be. I'll be that old guy with the beard. <laughs> like, he looks familiar, but I don't know who he is. And I'll be, you know, like Last Mohicans, I'll be on that horse, like, in that woods. And you'll be like, that guy, is he crazy? I don't know. <laughs> but he's wearing, he's dressed nicely. Mm -hmm. Kind of holy, but he's dressed nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I will yeah. join you there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, Jeff, is there anything else that you want to share with us? No, I mean, I guess just, you know, the idea is just to be aware of what you're wearing. I mean, mm -hmm. look at your tags, see what you're, it's made of, and just go natural. Um, and if you can't find what you're looking for, please contact us. We'll help. We know a lot of sustainably, sustainable minded designers that, um, you know, do other products that we don't do. So that's the idea. We want to just encourage that. So, yeah. That's cool. Well, Jeff, thank you so, so much for yeah. all of your support with Scott Absolutely. Week. And Absolutely. seriously, go check out this, the Kickstarter. Get yourself in these hemp underwear. And and I'll be in Scotland next week. Oh, my gosh. So we'll be sending pictures. Hopefully we'll shoot that on horseback in hemp boxers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so in other words, follow them on Instagram for all their amazing stories from Scotland. Yeah. It'll be fun. <laughs> awesome. But just a little, little one before London Fashion Week. Very cool. Have to work. <laughs> <laughs>